Good evening. Martin Luther King said that in the end, we will not remember the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. So tonight, I will be speaking to you about the importance of that silence and about the danger of that indifference. I'd like to start by asking you a question. There's no need to raise your hands, but simply to consider. Have you ever experienced a time in your life when you felt unsupported? A time in your life when those around you turned a blind eye to your suffering? A time when those around you practiced indifference rather than support? I'd like you to consider, if so, how that made you feel. Albert Einstein said that the world is a dangerous place, not because of those who do evil, but because of those who stand by and do nothing as those acts of evil are committed. Indifference can be dangerous. A man who experienced that indifference to an unimaginable extent was Elie Wiesel. Elie Wiesel was born on the 30th of September, 1928, in a small town called Saget in the Carpathian Mountains. Growing up in a Hasidic Jewish community, Zaget recounts his memories from his childhood, filled with friendship and warmth from those around him. However, at the age of 15, after Hungary was annexed by Nazi Germany, Weisel and the rest of his family were deported to Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camp. Weisel and two of his sisters were the only members of his family to survive. Growing up as a young girl, I remember listening in fascination to Weisel's talk to the Congress and to President Clinton. There he recounted his suffering in the Holocaust. I remember being astounded at the suffering that he endured, although at my young age, I found it somewhat difficult to comprehend. However, what I found even more difficult to comprehend and understand was the disdain with which Weisel spoke of apathy of the dangers that he believed that apathy and silence caused to society. How, I thought, could doing nothing cause so much danger and so much problem, and so many problems? How could do doing nothing be so problematic? Weisel spoke of the suffering that he and those around him endured, of the pain that they felt, they believed the world could not have known what had happened to them or else something could have been done to prevent it. So, what is indifference? Etymologically, the word means no difference. It is the absence of compulsion to or towards someone or something. Weisel describes it as a strange state where the lines are blurred between good and evil, right and wrong, Crime and, punish, crime and punishment, cruelty and passion, light and darkness. It is a state in which indifference thrives and in which danger can occur. So, can indifference ever be positive? Weisel ponders on its nature. Is it a philosophy? Can a philosophy of indifference be conceivable? Can indifference be considered a virtue? Is it necessary, perhaps, for one to consider indifference, practice indifference, to enjoy a normal life, to relax on holiday, to enjoy a meal with friends, without considering the events of the world around you? Faisal himself acknowledges that indifference is tempting. It is so much easier to ignore the suffering of others. It is so much easier to turn away when something doesn't directly affect you. You see someone being bullied at school. That's not you doing it, so therefore that's not your problem. You turn away from acts of homophobia. That's not, if it's not affecting you, again, why should that be your problem? However, when you do that, you turn the victim to nothing. You turn away from their suffering and it forces their anguish and their pain to become nothing. It is so much easier to ignore these rude interruptions to our work, to our holidays, to our life. However, do remember that that does turn that suffering into nothing. 
In times of injustice, I'm often surprised and perplexed by this lack of care from others. Some say that they remain neutral. Some say that they simply don't care. Some say that they don't know enough about a topic to give an opinion on it. However, as Desmond Tutu said, if you choose to remain neutral in a, si in a situation of injustice, this means that you have chosen the side of the oppressor. Now, of course, I'm not asking you to speak out against every single act that you see. Of course, that wouldn't be good for your mental health. For instance, if you see someone in the dining hall that gets more food than you, I wouldn't recommend writing to your local MP to say you're outraged at this injustice. There are so many examples of positive action that has occurred in society. Faisal himself recounts of the gratitude that he felt towards those who liberated him in Auschwitz. He said that even if he lives to be a very old man, he will always be grateful for their rage and for their compassion. Even though they did not speak the same language as him, their eyes told the story that they too would bear witness. I will finish on a speech, on a poem, sorry, by Martin Neymola. Martin Neymola was a German Lutheran pastor who was most famous for his activism against Hitler and the Nazi party in the 1930s. First, they came for the communists, and I did nothing because I was not a communist. Then they came for the, for the socialists, and I did nothing because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I did nothing because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did nothing because I was not a Jew. I ask you and implore you to take courage in times of injustice. It may be so much easier to look away from the victim and turn and do nothing. However, please, rem please remember the consequences of your actions and how much this can mean to others. Thank you for listening.